Okay. Good morning. Good it's morning. Wednesday, March 20th, and it's snowing outside and winter has made a comeback. And our poor little birds, as you were saying, are chirping away like crazy. So yes. it's like, feed the birds. I heard them singing this morning. Remember Mary Poppins, yeah. feed the birds? Oh, wow. Anyway, we need to feed those birds. At well, least for a few days, put something out for them. There's lots of bird lovers that have that all under control, I'm sure. So, good morning. I see Rita. I think I saw Debbie. Lori. Pat. And Kathy Lucas. So I know Arlene said that it was snowing quite a bit more in Cortland, Delhi area. Yeah, and you said it was blowing like blizzard conditions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So wonder if the rest of you are feeling some of that. Yeah, so it's just snowy. It stopped now, but <laughs> it's just, you know. Linda said her husband took the snow tires off. Yeah, I was worried about that, so mine are still on. Bill has me booked to have mine, my my sandals put on, as I call it, because I like I like the the wheel rims, you know, if it's summertime, because mm -hmm. they just look, you know, for winter, the winter tires. But I think he had them booked for next week, but we'll see. Well, it's it's all good because everyone in Canada looks like that in the winter. It's not, you know, how it used to be the odd person had those ugly tires. Now yeah. everyone does. So yeah, I just don't have the pretty rims for winter, but yeah. but That's those winter cool. tires have made a difference when we've had big winters. Mm -hmm. So it's either a good shopping day or a sewing day, depending on where you are. Right. So you might have noticed we're kind of doing something different. So I think we're having a featherweight theme day. So our door prizes kind of reflect that. We have a featherweight cookie cutter. So you can make some beautiful, tasty sugar cookies. And then um, this is our last little featherweight print. It's, there's a two yard cut there. And then I have a black and white fat quarter bundle. I think there's eight of them. And those are always great neutrals. So um, make a comment, uh, just comment on something that you love or interact, and then we'll enter your name into the draw. And we'll do that at the end. So it's kind of Featherweight Wednesday today. Uh, uh, some of you have featherweight machines mm -hmm. or would like to buy one. Sometimes um, if you inquire, we might we may come across one that we may have for sale. But we have this little beauty sitting here on the table. And um, something interesting you might find is that at the, at the bottom, uh, maybe Tammy, you can show them where, um, your serial number, this one is like right there, right? Right here. And it's usually like it's it's, it's printed in on, on stamped like a, in yes yeah, stamped in and so that number will tell you the date you can look up to see the date that it was manufactured and the for the two twenty ones I just thought this was interesting any of the ones that have um, okay that have an E on them were manufactured in Elizabethport New Jersey. Any of the ones that start with a K were manufactured in Kilbowie, Scotland. And any of the ones with um, a J were manufactured in St. John's, Quebec, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And so you can look to see the year. And I know when I looked this one up, um, it was made in um, Elizabethtown, New Jersey, because it has an E on it. And it was 1948. So people sometimes like to collect them for their birthdays. If you are shopping for one at an auction or somewhere, one of the things I want you to be very wary of is I'm just going to turn this around. See this bobbin case that's sitting in here? Unfortunately, sometimes people steal them. So when you're buying one, make sure it's there because mm -hmm. that bobbin case is over $100 yes. to buy new. <clears throat> so... At least that's something that you could negotiate if you were buying it from somebody personally if it wasn't there or to be aware when you were buying it at a, an auction or a buy and sell mm -hmm. kind of thing because they are sweet little machines. And we have um, a gentleman in Ingersoll who does a wonderful job of reconditioning them and so that you can send it out and it'll come back to you all oiled, greased and... Um, quite often like I'm, we're going to show different things here but the drip pad replaced 
and quite often if they smell it's because they've been sitting there for so many years and the oil has dripped on them and it's just that oil smell mm -hmm. so when you replace that nice little felt drip tray it uh, drip pad it makes a big difference something interesting when I was reading up on it that um, when they were made between the 1930s and 50s mm -hmm. they were like 125 to 150 dollars mm -hmm. so with inflation in 2024 how much do you think they'd be worth now oh I'm seeing some go I'm seeing some of these go as high as 800 500 400 they're sometimes worth like 300 2800 yeah it depends yeah. where yeah now if you were doing it in today's dollars yes mm -hmm. so if you have a little gem it's a little gem to keep yeah and they're easy to take care of there's lots of information on the featherweight shop if you happen to poke around on there there's so many videos and history and information yeah on, you know on how to thread your needle to if you have any problems has, yeah but it is a sweet little machine to do straight stitch but there's other things that you can do on it too because there is a little cover now that you can get to cover the feed dogs and we have the darning foot so you could do free motion on mm -hmm. it a lot of people like to take these traveling we see a lot of them at retreats i think this is a great machine to teach a little one to sew because there's really nothing you know too much that they can hurt themselves or hurt the machine mm -hmm. We also have now nice little LED bulbs that will replace the original bulbs that fit in there. It makes it so much brighter to sew. Mm -hmm. And we have the, we've shown it before, but we have the, you know how we showed you the acrylic tables before? Well, there's a nice black acrylic one that goes around this with all the nice writing on it. And it's scroll, like the gold <coughs> scroll. And that just gives you more workspace. But I know that um, I gave my daughter-in-law that your daughter in law and a new sewer um, in Nevada one at Christmas time. And uh, she was just thrilled because that, you know, and is doing so some different things. They are cute, they don't take up a lot of room. Well, Mary's just saying that you can put them in your carry on and take them on your airplane. Yes, you can. So she's obviously done that. And, and so the featherweights are the ones that have the little bed that pops up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think that the ones in the wooden case that weigh a ton are featherweights. Those are not featherweights. No, but if you happen to... Now, the 222s, like these are all 221s. The 222s have like a free arm. They're more rare. I think, Arlene, we just saw one at an auction that went well over $1,000, mm -hmm. right, for a 222. Here recently, we were both kind of watching it online, and it went poof. Yeah, somebody's paying for But it. they are just... They are really cute, but they sew a lovely straight line and uh, nice tension. And like I said, easy to carry around. So maybe you want to go through go, okay. go through some of these right. accessories, right? I'm just going to move this over. So you get a featherweight. Probably one of the first things you should do is get a little manual. Hopefully it comes with one. If not, you can buy them on their own. We have them in the store and on our website. Or there's a place online that you could download it if you need to quickly reference. These are 1975. So there's lots of information in there, everything from threading to tension, like that's a golden little book. Then to do maintenance, uh, there's the Singer Featherweight Maintenance Handbook, and, and it's on a stand. Yeah, and our fellow who does maintenance just says this is about the best book he's ever seen on the market. So you can have this propped up beside you. One thing I forgot to bring is a schematic mat. Mm. But there's a mat that you can set your little sewing machine on so that your table doesn't get dirty. And then, you know, you flip through. Okay, yeah, that. it might not be bad. Let's get that. Thanks, Arvin. You flip through, and it just gives you the information on what you need to do, where to do it. It's like your own little personal guide to help you take care of your machine. But it has a lot of information in it. The book is... $70. But... It's really? something that you're going to use over and over again. And then once you've done some maintenance, there's a little maintenance record book, a log book, so that you can keep track of what you did when, so that you're a little more organized with that. And then, of course, you know, to clean your machine, you want to use um, very gentle cleaners. All the harsh cleaners that are out there today, they'll wreck your finish. So this is a good polish cleaning kit. This is a little dusting kit, has little brushes, a little microfiber cloth. And it has little brushes in there too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, just. There's, I think there's two brushes. Yeah. There's one in this little. Oh, oh yeah, there, it there it is. Yeah. I was going to say, and I thought there were two brushes. There's these little cleaning brushes that you can buy in a bigger package. Oh, Arlene, you're a doll. Thank you. 
she has brought down, just so we can show you, here is a schematic mat. And it shows you everything that goes into that machine, which is kind of nice to sit it on, but this is very handy. And um, you need to look at the bag for the price on that. Do you happen to recall? It's okay, I'm looking here, but I don't... Yeah, so it's I don't see it fairly big. Oh, it's right way. here. It's $36. $36. And so it's like a good um, it's foamy. rubber... Yeah. It's going to it's going to last. So you know you can just set your little machine on there. While you're doing your work, it can catch what you're doing. Um, what else do we have? So when you're doing your there's the motor and grease. Oops, wrong thing. The oil. And that will be in your manual. Where to put that, how often, how to do it. We have belt replacements. That might be hard to see. Let's just okay. do this. Yeah, we have a belt replacement. And we also have a case deodorizer that um, that will help. Because oh, sometimes when you get them and they're so um, musty and whatever and, and uh, with the oil. Now with the case deodorizer, you know, like if you need to store your little feather weight, you're not going to use it. Don't store it in your shed, in your garage, in your wet basement. You know, a hall closet or a guest room somewhere where it's like an air control climate is much better. So often because they have been stored in basements and sheds and oh, that's why they're like getting those terrible smells. Yeah, and there's so much grime to remove from them because some of them have really been neglected. So I did also read that if there is like grease and grime that you can't get off, you can use a kerosene or like a lighter fluid that mm -hmm. you would just gently wipe with. Yeah, alcohol, rubbing alcohol works yeah, good so sometimes too. You just want to be careful what you're using on them. So the case deodorizer spray is $13. The felt drip pad is $11.99. The belt was $15.50. Uh, so we have extra, we have quarter inch feet for them. And we have like a walking foot available for them. This is um, a bobbin tension meter that, that can be purchased. And then there's, uh, of course, you need more bobbins, a roll of bobbins. I know I have a darning foot and the little um, plate, as I mentioned, to yeah, put over top. Yeah, there's a few things we just didn't bring everything down. And uh, maybe you want to talk about some needles here. Now, when you are putting needles in, they recommend that you use the Chrome Microtex so that you have a nice sharp point. Um, if you do happen to get a machine that has like a little container of Singer needles, as long as they're not like corroded or rusted, you can still use them. They're still good. So you can use any needle on the machine, like your regular needles, but these, you know, the Featherweight Shop says that they've had, you know, more luck with them, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they recommend. Um, another thing too I wanted to point out, see on this one, um, this one would, this would make this machine more valuable. You can see all the nice scrolling here. So some things to watch out for because sometimes they just have them kind of plain. But, you know, they're just, they're, like I said, they're just sweet little machines. Sometimes the cases are toasted. So we can, um, we can get brand new cases. I just will warn you that they are very pricey. Um, and you may want to just make one, but you can get them. If your handle is worn out, they do sell replacement handles on their website. Yeah. There's just everything on there. And we also carry, for those little acrylic tables, this sweet little featherweight bag to carry it to retreats and classes or to store it in. And we should turn around and talk about what we have behind us too. Great. So while you're um, doing the maintenance on your machine, there's an oil cloth apron that you can wear. Isn't that fun? And I mean, that would just be fun for doing other things. It's $42, but oil cloth, and that'll last you forever. <laughs> and then there's also a cute gift tote bag that's 13 Yeah, that you could maybe take your, your, your projects. Yeah, so it's not to carry your machine. It's just to carry your supplies to a class or, you know, for the weekend or whatever. Just a fun little thing. So we like, you, when you think of featherweight, like we don't carry other machine supplies, but we do carry them for featherweights, so... We like to be your featherweight specialist in Canada. Right. And so a lot of people are surprised we have them, but go on our website. I just finished putting all of it on there. Great. So you can find it there. Perfect. 
Um, what shall we talk about now? Maybe I'll get you talking about classes and things that are upcoming, Danny. Okay, so let's do this one first, because Saturday, this class is up. It's the um, Tuesday tote. So Bonnie will be teaching you how to put this tote together, to do the zipper, to do um, a magnetic snap in there. I think there's a pocket. Or yeah, be. There's po there could be. So there's lots of versatility with it. And we, she's put leather on the bottom, which we have, like brown and black leather. We have a whole bunch of new cork that we've brought in. So that there's lots of fun. options. So that's on Saturday from 9 to 2.30. And we still have some room. So we'll that would be a room. fun little class to do and get away from it all. Okay, so we still have the umbrella class, Tuesday, March 26th, and Tuesday, April 9th. And then the Metro Rings class, uh, Saturday, April 13th. And then a new beginner class starting April 25th to June 13th on Thursdays from 12 to 3. The Dresden Plate uh, wall hanging class is Saturday, May 18th. And then we also have a featherweight maintenance class in case you want some hands-on instead of maybe a book doesn't work for you. You can take a class and yeah, walk he, through and it with Ian. Ian is wonderful and that's the gentleman that does the refurbishing. So when you come out of that class, your, your machine has been serviced. And it's a hands-on class, so we'll prepare to get your hands dirty. And yeah, because you're taking it apart and learning how what's what else. Okay. What's all of what that machine is all about? So that takes care of the classes. We've had some fun little mugs arrive. So we have. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy beautiful fabric, and that's kind of the same thing. And then it has a whole description on the back. And what's this one say? Uh, she who loves to quilt. And there's a little... Uh, and these are great, you know, stainless steel mugs with the nice tops on them. And that, so it's not going to leak. They're $21.99. So we have a variety. I think there's five or six yeah, different ones. I just grabbed ones. three. But five or six different more. ones. So something fun. They're a good gift and they're kind of nice just to have. And then we have this cute little dress, little summer sundress that Arlene made. Just showing you that, you know, you can use quilting cottons for more than quilting. We all know that, but sometimes we need a now, reminder. Is that the front or the back? That's the front and this is the back. The buttons go at the back. But they, yeah, they're, it's just an adorable little dress. So what did you say? This was about two yards? Uh, no, one yard. Oh, one yard. I was wrong. And you said this was a free pattern you found online? Yes, and we will share the link. And Ar Arlene's going to post the link to it. And this would fit a 2T? Uh, 3T. Three, three, three 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 so you can like, grow into it. Yeah, so you could downsize it or upsize it. And so we thought, well, why don't we all pick a fabric that we thought we would make a little dress out of? So this was Cynthia's pick with the little dog faces. I think it's because Murph. <laughs> it just is fun. And I can just picture my little Eleanor running around. The other thing you can do with some of these really pretty fabrics too is just even like a t-shirt you know you find their a cute little t-shirt that mm -hmm. fits them and then add like a, a you a know the skirt, skirt yeah to the I've bottom of it yeah and you can pick this great little novelty fabric to do that this was angelique's pick just a nice little print a blue background with little daisies on it yeah very delicate this was arlene's choice with the owls nice and fun and then my choice was the little strawberries. And it's kind of blue. Yeah, it's a tealy blue. Yeah. I think I'm looking forward to strawberry season. <laughs> but anything would work. I picked up some strawberries at uh, this Metro, two ninety nine. But you have to eat them right away because they started to, you know, they were just. Yes. Up, so I think that there was a reason they were two ninety nine. But they were still very yummy. I was craving them too. Yeah, they're they. This is the April Showers Bring May Flowers little $5 panel. We still have two of those. And then we have yardage that goes with that. With the little watering can and the umbrellas. And they're and so sweet because you, you could put a border around that or something underneath it. You know, or just border it up and put it on the door. Um, this would be nice for your own door or for, you know, somebody that's in the hospital or a nursing home or... You know, your little one as you're teaching them seasons. Lots of great uses for that. Hey there, Leslie Drake. Good morning. <laughs> um, fabric? Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll show this one. So it's, um, it's kind of pretty. What do they call this? Like alabaster. 
and this one, yeah, let's see that. Oh, it's, it's almost like it's um, laying on top of it. I don't know what that technique is called. It's not coming to me. Like Emb it's, it's, like, it's like it's embossed. Maybe? Yeah, like it's 3D. It's a very interesting piece. We love our dry brush fabrics, and this one um, has finally arrived, and it's like a nice terracotta. Um, like a rusty. Yeah. They don't have the colors, so they're 16. 16 yards. This is, we've had such good luck, and I, I just want you to see the depth of that color. Just very, very nice. And we've had a couple of wide backs come in. One of our favorites here is like the, the sateen. This is 118 inches wide. And it has really two sides because it has a very shimmery side. And then it has a flatter side if you don't want the shimmery side showing. But it's fabulous. Um, it gives it a whole cloth look when on the back of your yeah. quilt. I forget how much that is at a yard. They are 22. Okay. And this one is $26.99, and it is in from Michael Miller. And oh, look at how beautiful this print is. That's nice and springy. I know, we're just all craving some of that. Nice big flowers and sort of that blue-purple, right? Mm -hmm. So that one is $26.99. Oh, Marilyn says she loves our sateen backings, and Marilyn does some long-arm quilting. Then we also have the um, Kona Sheen. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but it wasn't. So you can see how it shimmers when you move it. And these are 15, so that's like a Christmas green, I think. Yes. There's so many different uses. It's just your imagination. This is called Midnight Red. See, so when you, just, you lift it like that, they, oh, they can really see. That looks like a gown, like the color of an, it does. a beautiful gown. And then there's this, what was this one called? Radiant Red. So again. I think you have to turn it and lift it because so, it just, yeah, there it shows go. so nice on the screen when you do that. Look at that. So nice and shimmery. And then this one is Midnight Green. So like that burgundy or, but like a. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm. <laughs> Remember green velvet dresses. Oh, I had a green velvet dress like that. Did you? I did. And they had, remember, there was taffeta dresses yeah. too. I had a tartan taffeta dress. Oh, the red looks for like Christmas. a dress from Gone with the Wind. Yes. Mm. Fine. So I think it's show and tell time. And we have some good show and tell today. This was Kathy, I think you said. It was somebody who emailed it in, Kathy. I forget. I, I do remember oh. reading it. Oh, sorry. Hmm? Bursminski. Kathy Bursminski. Yes. Thank you so much, Kathy, for sending this picture of, it's of a all your quilt. dots in. Yeah. yeah. Took us a while, but we got it. There's Debbie. She made up this baby quilt kit that we have, and uh, I know it's going to be a gift, I think, for one of her daughter's friends that's expecting. Oh, she finished Primitive Stars. Yeah. That was one of your favorites, all the new <laughs> friendship stars. <laughs> yeah, she did a great job. Other oh, star, I miss this one. This is just, this was just gorgeous. Mm. Yeah. I remember when she brought it in. Yeah. Remember we were talking about star last week, about she gets to be retired? Well, she's just glowing. She is loving it. And this is star here with her beautiful finished quilt, who is rocking retirement. There's Gail Connor. And this is an Alice in Wonderland quilt and um, the Station Arts Center. Um, this is one that she made for their auction this fall and the theme is going to be Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. So those are all Alice in Wonderland themes. And I know fabrics. that she had ordered some of those fabrics from England to get them, mm. you know, to uh, go to coincide with the theme this year. Oh, and look at this one. Who is this again? Oh. She's got her head turned, so I can't see her face. Hmm. If someone knows, please post the name. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, if I... This was stunning. Yeah. It was, and it was... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I know. I, it's just if she tur if we had the picture with her face turned, I could tell you who it was. Anyway, it's pretty cool. 
And this one is one that uh, Jane Miner brought in and she is doing um, a little bit of work on it for a friend. And this is somebody's antique quilt. And this is all hand done. And I want you, if you have time cabin? at home, it is log cabin, oh, wow. to zoom in and see these tiny pieces. And she used, there's a lot of ticking fabric in there. And it was the use of blacks and then some dark greens and some dark browns and Oh, and then those tiny little red, you know, centers for the blocks. It was just a stunning quilt. We really enjoyed looking at it. And when people share some of their older things, we're always so so touched um, that you'd bring that in because that would be a very old quilt. Okay, what else do we have here? This is Marilyn. She was in yesterday picking that up. Yeah, and she made this with a layer cake, a Christmas quilt. And isn't it a beauty? Mm-hmm. It's big. I think she said she used two. Mm -hmm. She did a lovely job. So she was inspired and that's one of our runner kits that we had oh, last we, year. Oh, we had some pictures up and I meant to put those up too, maybe next week, of Maureen's kimonos. Oh, right. Forgot yeah, so we'll, we'll get those up too because they were lovely. So this is the beginner class. This is Kathleen. Her finished uh, top except for the outer border, but she's got it together. And Sarah has hers a good way done. And this is hers with the beautiful blues, mm -hmm. blue and white. And here's Trudy. See, they all look so different and they're all so beautiful. Yeah, they've all accomplished a lot. So we just love seeing what people have done and celebrating with them just on that journey. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, as you know, Tammy mentioned, we have another beginner class coming up here soon. Okay, it's store prize time. Your favorite time. So first we're going to do the cookie cutter. Kathy Lucas. Congratulations, Kathy. Then the um, feather, uh, featherweight yardage. Jean Robinson. Congratulations, Jean. And a little black and white back quarter bundle. Carol Kelly. Carol Kelly. Congratulations, Carol. Carol oh. is in Cambridge. And Jean is in Georgetown. And who did you say the first one was? Kathy, Kathy Lucas. Lucas. Not sure where Kathy is. <coughs> so they're spread I can just, out. It's funny. I can picture people when you know when you say the names. So, so you can come pick those up or we can mail them if you know the weather and you're far away. And just, re just a reminder, next weekend is Easter weekend mm -hmm. and we are closed on the Saturday. So Good Friday and Saturday we're closed and everybody will have a nice uh, family long weekend. Oh, Kathy says she's from Stony Creek. There you so, go. So there we go, Kathy. Thank you. So we're from all, we um, just, just to let you know that we won't be here. That's right. We'll hopefully be having some Easter time. Easter time and some fun with family and some nice meals, I expect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.